Happy New Year, everybody, from us at the Canadian Gap Year Association. Today's episode, we are jumping into a pretty ugly topic. We have talked to loads of gappers who talk about these feelings that emerge for them around guilt and shame when they are choosing a pathway that is maybe a little bit less common. So we're going to chat today about how to identify and navigate some of those really challenging feelings as we go into making decisions for ourselves that are are in our best interest and how do we acknowledge but also not let those feelings take over what we need to do for ourselves. So take a listen. Welcome to the Gap Year Podcast, where we explore the who, what, where, when and why of gap years. It's real people sharing their stories, ideas, and experts diving deep into how you can make the right decisions in order to have a meaningful gap year. This is the place to be no matter where you are on your gap year journey. I'm Michelle Dittmer, your resident gap year expert. Let's jump right in. Hey there, and welcome to the Gap Year Podcast. My name is Michelle Dittmer, and I am your host and Gap Year expert. So we're heading into a new year, 2022, and this always brings up conversations around resolutions and goal settings, themes for the year, your mantra for the year, or whatever iteration of that you can imagine. And while I am not shy about my love for goal setting, um, uh, you can ask any of the gappers I work with how important goal setting is, this topic today relates to conversations that I have with many, many future gappers, um, specifically those who are looking to start a gap year in this upcoming fall. And it brings about a feeling that gets in the way of goal setting and gets in the way of planning. So today's conversation ties nicely with the new year, but it's something that I hear year round. Now, This feeling that gets in the way is not a warm and fuzzy feeling that we often talk about. It's a very complex feeling, and this complex feeling can be brought about by many, many different things. It can be brought about by your family culture. It can be brought about by peer pressure or the idea of conforming to societal norms. And very often, it's your own inner critic that's bringing out these emotions. Um, And they can all really think all of these all of these pressures, all of these voices think that there is some sort of highway to success. And for some bizarre reason, you're considering a detour. And that puts up bells of alarm when everything around us seems to be saying, go left and you're going, wait a minute, maybe I want to go right. And this little voice pops into your head. And when we're thinking about a gap year, sometimes this voice can come in and sound like questions that you're asking yourself. Like, why on earth do you need to take a break? A break from what? You don't have a job. You don't have a family. What do I need a break from? Um, or the idea of who are you to need a rest? What, what is going on in your life that you need to take a break from? Or um, maybe the voice might be saying things like, you shouldn't need to take time to figure your life out. Everyone will know that you're a fraud and that you don't know what you want to do with your life and everybody else has it figured out. I've also heard this voice showing up and talking in the voice of um, your parents' ambitions for you. Uh, Maybe it sounds something like this. My parents have been dreaming of me going to university for my whole life, and I can't screw that up. I also hear gappers with a voice that says, I'm too ashamed to admit that I don't want the same things as my peers right now. I, I want a gap year, but that, that, that must be dumb. Nobody else wants it. So I must, there's something wrong with me. Um, and all of these little messages come to us from, they're, they're really rooted in self-doubt and in shame and in guilt 
and they're they're all there and they're that's kind of an ugly emotion to feel but we have to honor that it's there sometimes for us so we're going to be talking about in today's episode how do we navigate those feelings of guilt and shame when we are making this decision about post-secondary when we are putting ourselves first uh, because that's a, it's a lifelong skill that we really need to exercise. And so let's jump into that and let's really embrace how do we navigate those things. So sometimes these things are very intrinsic. They come from where, where we are ourselves. And sometimes they're put on to us by others. So that from others, it's very clear to see sometimes our parents have expectations of us. Maybe our peers have particular opinions and society as a whole has kind of this tried, tested and true path of high school, university, job. And if you're doing something different, then then you should, then there's something wrong with you because you're different, because you're making a different choice than the majority of people. We can start to question ourselves. And when we start to question ourselves and we put these judgments on ourselves, it can sound very different. Um, instead of asking those questions like, who am I to do this? It's It sounds like I am not worthy of taking time for my mental health. Others have it much worse than I do, and they're going to be able to go on to post-secondary. So, so um, I, I don't deserve this time off. Or even, I owe my parents so, so much. I need to go to university to uh, make them proud, even though I don't feel ready. Or even so, um, I'd be wasting my money and time by not going to school or I'll fall behind, or I won't be as productive as other people. I I will be falling behind. They're going to get better jobs. They're going to become independent sooner. All of these things are judgments that we place upon ourselves, whether they're true or not, and in most cases not. Um, But shame and guilt and self-doubt are very, very powerful emotions. And when they do pop up in our thought patterns, we need to acknowledge when they surface. And this is a really, really important step for you is to say, oh, there's that inner critic. There is that voice that's talking again. And where is this coming from? Um, sometimes these, these thoughts come from a place of honor, like trying to please our parents, trying to make sure that we are making other people happy. Sometimes they come from a place of past trauma. Maybe somebody in your life, uh, maybe you, you didn't feel valued by important people in your life. And so you're not worthy of taking that time for yourself. Um, And sometimes, you know what, they're just part of adolescent brain chemistry, and we can't really do anything about them. That's just the way that adolescents are hardwired. Um, And those thoughts are just going to exist. But we do have control over how do we put them into context. So let's talk about guilt first. If you feel guilty, if that is if that's an emotion that you can name when you're thinking about the idea of taking a gap year, you might want to explore what you feel guilty about. Who are you going to disappoint and why? Or what are you going to be letting pass you by by taking a gap year? Um, this one, guilt also pops up for people who are on a gap year. They don't feel like they're doing enough. And this idea of enoughness um, can really, really set us on another track. And maybe that's a whole other podcast episode. But who are you going to disappoint and why? And really, really explore that question, because I think that will lend a lot of clarity to the next couple of steps when we're talking about guilt. One of the tools for dealing with guilt as you explore the idea of a gap year is to really put that guilt into perspective and and backtrack a little bit and really identify very, very clearly what is the reason why you want to take your gap year. So people are always (laughs) jumping to the what. What are you going to do with your time? What are you going to do on your gap year? What are you going to get out of it? But before we can get to the what and before we can rationalize the idea of taking a gap year with the what, we actually have to look at the why. 
why do you want to take a gap year? When you have a really, really strong why, or not even strong, but a clear why, people can't argue with it. So people can argue with the what. So let's say you want to get a job on your gap year. The rebuttal might be, well, there are no jobs out there right now, so you may as well go to school. Or if you want to travel on your gap year, oh, travel, what a waste of money. You should be putting that into tuition. So all of these what's, there, there's a counter argument to it because it is something external. It's something out there in the world. So there is that ability to come back with a counter argument. But what people can't argue with is your why, because that's part of who you are. People can't change that. They, they can't justify something if you're talking about your why. So let's say maybe perhaps you are burnt out. So your why is I need to take a gap year because I'm burnt out and I'm not going to do well in school because of it. Um, I need to focus on my mental health before I get back into school. These things, th these are a really, really compelling why. You have a reason why you want to do it. We're not talking about the what because we can fight those things. But nobody can look at you and say, no, you are not burnt out because that is part of who you are and that is your right to assess how you are doing and to take action on it. So I think if somebody is going to fight you on this one, then they're going to need a really, really good argument. Um, and it's, it's not going to be, well, just focus on your mental health and school at the same time because that's impossible. Um, if you really feel you need that time, then uh, doing a double shift and working on both at the same time can be very challenging and in some cases even more detrimental. So let me give you another example here. Um, maybe your why is, uh, I don't know what I want to study, so I'm going to take some time to figure it out instead of wasting money and time in a program that I don't even like. Wow. Okay, so so you're actually going to figure it out because you, you are unclear about your future. So the rational brain will say, okay, wait a minute. So you're saying you're going to save money and figure your life out and then make a better choice for yourself in your future. Well, that sounds good to me. So, so that why really stands out as something that's really, really powerful um, and can really, really help you. And not only in navigating this feeling of guilt, but also being clear on your why will really center your gap year around how you need this time, how you intend to grow and change over the course of that year. So you, and probably eventually others, can see the value in your year. By, because just looking at the what is not going to help you overcome those feelings of guilt. Now, I also want to touch on how easy it is to compare yourself to your peers. And this is where some of this shame or uh, self-doubt comes in. We are always comparing ourselves to others. Who got the better mark on a test? Who has more social followers? Who's still rocking the skinny jeans? Who is more popular? Who has the better business? Who is going to be the best athlete on the team? We're always comparing ourselves to other people. And that's part of being human. But another piece of being human is that we are also so unique with our own unique journeys and our own unique needs. Now, I, I, we, we talk about being unique all the time, and I think that that's, it, it, it's kind of overused sometimes. But I want to share one of the most enlightening quotes that I heard at a conference many, many moons ago that has really, really stuck with me. And I think it's such a powerful thing for us when we are in that point of discovering who we are as a young person, moving into adulthood and starting to look around at the world and starting to compare ourselves to others or to continuing comparing ourselves to, to others. So hear me out. This is a quote that's been attributed to many people. Um, I'm going to pick the attribution of Theodore Roosevelt. And here it comes. Comparison is the thief of all joy. 
comparison is the thief of all joy. Now, I freaking love this. And I'm going to say it again. Comparison is the thief of all joy. I want you to really, I don't know, if you're a journaler, sit down with a notebook and write about it. If you are a talker, go for a walk with a friend and have a conversation around this quote because it is so rich. And the more you think about it, the more you unpack it, the more you reflect on how this shows up in your daily life, the more powerful it becomes. So maybe maybe you are happy in your life, but you're not as happy as that neighbor of yours. Or maybe you have enough money, but you're not as rich as so-and-so. Or you think you want to know what you want to do as a career, but so-and-so actually knows and they're actually taking steps for it. So if we take those three examples of happiness, um, uh, being financially independent and having some direction in your life, Those three things on their own seem pretty joyful. You're happy, you're financially stable, and you've got a vague life direction. That's pretty darn good, maybe even joyful. But when we drag others into our comparative, we become less than, or not as good as, or I could be better, I could be more. There's somebody out there who is doing this better than me. So all of that goodness that we had, being happy, financially stable, and having some direction in our life, that disappears when we are not as good as somebody else in those three categories. And that can really rob you of your joy. So I want you to to think about that as you're thinking about your your gap year. This is a personal journey. Um, It's a time to be self-serving and not selfish, not exploiting others. This is a time to focus on yourself, to intentionally focus on yourself. Moving from adolescence to adulthood, you better believe it is important to have a sense of self. Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you value? What will you stand up for? What do you want out of life? And how will you make your dreams come true? Those are not easy questions to answer. And they're not questions that you can do in your spare time. This is some really deep reflecting that you're going to do. And all of these things, when you start to answer these questions um, and you're, you're given time to reflect on them and time to explore them, then your life becomes so, so much richer. So by pushing out the thoughts of what your peers are saying, what your parents are saying, what society is saying, and you ask yourself about your life plan, all of a sudden, this decision doesn't seem selfish at all. This is a time for you to move from the passenger seat to the driver's seat of your life. The the decisions you make about your life are going to impact how things play out. And if you know that you need time or space, or you want to figure something out, then that's not something to feel guilty about. That's something to be empowered by, that you have enough self-awareness, you have enough confidence to be able to stand up for that. So you need to be able to pick apart those elements of self-doubt, those elements of guilt, those elements of trying to please other people. And it's time to stand up for what you need right now. That could be time and space. That could be um, fighting for opportunities to become more independent from your parents. That could be being able to contribute to your educational education financially by getting a full-time job or taking up more hours. Whatever it is that you need to feel fulfilled, this is the time to stand up and to be vocal and to fight for it because while those voices will still be there, they're not going to go away. We need to put them into perspective and we also need to learn to trust ourselves. We know ourselves better than anyone. Our parents aren't in our heads as we're lying in bed before we go to sleep, stressing about this or worrying about that or calculating this or weighing your options. 
No one else has walked into our shoe in our shoes. No one else knows our innermost desires and hopes for our lives. So I think we just need to take that into perspective as these feelings bubble up and how can we take those negative emotions and turn them into something that is a little bit more empowering. This idea that you are making a transition into the driver's seat of your life, the fact that you are going to start to advocate for what you need as as a human being and you're going to take a stand. While others might not be bold enough to stand up for themselves and their needs, and you know what, sometimes they're even going to be celebrated as the heroes for doing the status quo. By advocating for yourself, you are going to have learned and practiced a great skill. You're going to have learned to listen to yourself, learn to acknowledge the feelings of guilt and shame, learning to let them pass through you, and to live in a space of joy. And that is so powerful. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to choose joy every single time. So if you are struggling with some of these emotions, some of these feelings of guilt, uh, of shame, or you don't feel like you're enough and you need a little pep talk, that's what our gap year coaches are for. We have a phenomenal team at CanGap that will help you through that decision-making process, that will listen to some of those external factors that are weighing into your decision. And even if you're on your gap year and you need a little bit of a pep talk, that's what we're here for. We want to make sure that you as a young adult are coming into a place of power, a place of confidence, and a place of self-awareness. So that's our job and that's what we want to do for you. So if you could use that support, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Book a call with Jazz or myself. We'd be more than happy to talk to you and coach you through some of those emotions and really help you on your journey to secure your best future. So I hope this has been helpful for you and I look forward to talking to you on a call. And until next time, keep on adventuring.